Quick tip. Hello, creative. It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? Okay. I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. There are four ways to skew or shear objects and text in Illustrator. The first way is to use the transform panel. You can show the transform panel by coming to Window, Transform. With your transform panel up, and your object that you'd like to skew selected, you just come over here to the shear field and type in an amount such as 45 degrees. Here, the sides are now still parallel, but the whole object has been skewed. The second way to skew an object is to select the point that you'd like to skew with the direct selection tool or white arrow by clicking on the individual point that you'd like to skew or selecting multiple points. Either way, you can decide to add in the shift key to constrain it. The third way is to use the shear tool. The shear tool can be found on your toolbar by clicking and holding the scale tool. Once you click and hold, the shear tool is a sub tool buried underneath that. Once you have your object selected and you choose the shear tool, you're able to click down and extend out your shear. Here, I had the shift key held in when I click and dragged. Without key held, you can see that not only the shear, but also the orientation of the axis that it's spinning on can also change, see? So if you're showing your smart guys, you can see this degree as well as the amount of the shear. When you hold in the shift key and select your object, you have a little bit less mobility on the X axis because it's snapping to 45 degree angles. The last way to shear an object is to still use the shear tool, but to double click it. Here, the shear dialog box pops up and you have the opportunity to type in the amount or degree of that shear or spin the dial. If you have your preview checked, it will show you this. Depending on your object, be careful. Some degrees may be a bit extreme. So here, if I type in 45 degrees in preview, and I could change the angle as well here, minus 90 degrees in preview. So if I make it less extreme, 25 degrees, you also have the ability to change it on the vertical or horizontal axis when you're changing the degree or angle of your skew. So you really have a lot of flexibility to change both the angle as well as the axis from the shear dialog box. You have the same ability without utilizing the dialog box if you're showing smart guides where it lists the degree as well as the shear amount in the screen tip. You can ensure that smart guides are shown by coming to view, smart guides, or control U. One last note. When using the shear tool, you have the ability to not take it from its center by default, but rather placing that point of where you're going to skew away from, just like you do in the scale tool. See, now it's going to that upper point that I had placed. By default, it will be in the center of the object. So when you click off that tool, end object, and you click back on the shear tool, it will return to the default center of the object unless you click down and skew away from that point. I click down and skew away when I'm extending a shadow on text, for example. Here, I'll show you. I'll give myself some text here. 
and I'll go ahead and make it a little bit larger by Command or Control Shift greater than symbol. And I'm going to copy this with Command or Control C. Next, I'm going to lock this object down by doing Command or Control 2. Then I'm going to paste in back with Command or Control B. Now with the copy that I placed in back, I'm going to click down with my Share tool one time. I'm going to hold in my Shift to extend it away. You can see how it is extending or shearing away from this point that I've set. To show the difference here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the color in the shadow to a light gray. To really get the effect here, I'm going to do another skew and really extend it. So you can see the effect. I am holding the shift key down so that it constrains it to this horizontal plane. I'll go ahead and show my rulers with Command or Control R and drop down a guide. I'll zoom in with Command or Control Plus and you can see that I've clicked down on that line, the guide there, and skewed away from that point. In this sense, it almost looks like it's extending or giving it a drop shadow. Final step to really get some realism here is to drop the opacity to about 75%. So one last example I can show you here. I'm going to come to Object, Unlock All, and Delete. Guides by default will be locked, so you could right-click on your artboard and choose Unlock Guides in order to be able to select it and delete it. So when you're skewing a shape with the Shear tool, you have the ability to skew it away from its center or any point. Here, if I click down in the lower left-hand corner and skew away from that point, I have the ability to control where I skew that object. And that's how you can skew or shear an object in Illustrator. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. Woo! And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.